In this session, we're going to talk about transform nodes. Transforming things in Nuke is one of the key things you'll do. It's right up there with merging and color correction. You're going to use it all the time, you know, especially as a compositor. Part of what we're doing compositing is changing the scale of things or moving them or tracking them. That's what transforming things is. In this session, we're going to go over a few of the more common ones and some pitfalls and some things to be aware of when you're using them, as well as some of the less common ones and talk about trackers and some of the translators. So let's jump in. Let's talk about some of the common ones. The most common one you'll use is the transform node. You can use the hotkey T to pull that up. And it's basically a set of controls. We do have some on-screen controls for this node. It has some hotkeys as well, and you can click and drag it. You also can use control as a modifier key and move the center point, as you can see that moving in the property bin. And then you have some options for translate, rotate, scale, and skew. Next up, which is pretty common, but used a little less, especially with this particular methodology of pre-multiplying, is a transform masked. And this is a little different than a normal transform tool in that it has a mask input. In having that mask input, it also allows us to work on specific channels. So when I'm using the transform masked, I'm actually using it in a little bit different way. I'm using it to create chromatic aberration and do some other effects where I'm using that, that channel management where maybe I turn off the red or green. I'll show you here. We can scale this. And you can see we're only scaling those channels. So this is really where I use this. You can use this as sort of a cheat to create a patch, but you should really be looking at using actual masking merge operations to do that and creating a script that is, you know, pre-multiplied and over. The next big one is the corner pin tool. And what this does is it allows us to map one set of points to another set of points. If we zoom out here, we can see you have four points that are labeled as two. You also have a from tab that also has points. So a lot of times what you'll do is you'll use the from to set your initial shape. And then if we view this, you can see it scales. We actually want to copy our from, and that serves as our starting point to modify our two points. And this is a pretty common tool, and a lot of you know tracker nodes will also output corner pins. You can also use like a vector corner pin as well, which operates the same way. The next big one we have is a reformat. Reformat is exactly that. It's reformatting your input image into some other format. It has a few different options that you should be aware of. One is to format, and what that means is you can then select from a pull-down list of formats. You can also create new ones, edit, and delete custom ones. Your other option is to box. So this is if you're trying to set it to a very specific pixel size, and you can set this to scale the height automatically. So say we wanted to be this we wanted this to be 5,000 wide, it's gonna scale to whatever the appropriate ratio is, or if you want it to reformat to a very specific height, say we want this to be 3,000, we can actually force that shape. You can also modify pixel aspect. This is nice if you're working with anamorphic footage. And then we have our standard filter options. Our next really common tool is the crop tool. This one's pretty self-explanatory. So you can see we have a box here where we can grab and select and this basically crops our image. What's really worth noting here is there's a reformat option on a crop, and if you tick this box, it'll take your crop and then create a reformat to the size of that crop. This is really useful when you're doing some things in 3D, or you're trying to sort of manage the size of an image and you don't need all the extra. Next up is the mirror tool. And this is really exactly what it sounds like. You can either flip vertical, flip horizontal, or flip both. Some of the less common tools you're gonna deal with on a regular basis. One is lens distortion. If you're working in 3D space, you should be working with this pretty regularly, especially if you're generating it from your camera tracker. Camera shake can be useful sometimes. If you actually get into the guts of this, this is just a transform tool that has had a, it's basically been reskinned so the expressions are linked inside of the transform node and it allows you to create some modular sine waves and stuff like that. Next up we have a vector corner pin. This is basically a spin on the regular corner pin tool but it's using smart vectors to help drive animation. Definitely something to check out. It can be a really powerful tool. 
Next up is a spherical transform. If you're ever working with light probes or any other kind of render out of 3D space, this could be a useful tool. And it's built to take a bunch of different kind of maps. And if you hook one input up, you'll see that it has additional inputs that become available as those hook up. Next is ST map. And depending on your workflow, this might actually be one of the more common nodes you use. For me, I actually use ST map often, and I'll actually talk about that workflow later. But the ST map and iDistort, they're basically taking a map and they're using that map to determine where those pixels are moving. The big difference between the two of them, because they're actually operating very similarly, ST map is a absolute map, so it's expecting a very specific input map, where iDistort is a relative map. So if you import just a black image into the, the map side of that, it won't affect anything. Where if you input a black image into an ST map, it'll move all your pixels into one corner. It's also worth noting that some trackers are also transform nodes. Your standard 2D tracker has a transform output and it can serve as a transform node. When we talked about tracking, I, tra I talked about this process and actually trying to not use it because it is a little heavier than your standard transform nodes. The same with the vector distort, but you can actually output it in different ways that make it a little bit more efficient. Then we have some tools that are relevant to transform nodes, but aren't actually transform nodes themselves. And these are very seldom used, but it's good knowing that they exist. And they both kind of do the same thing, just the opposite. One is a reconcile 3D. This is a really interesting tool because if you have an axis and you have a camera and you need to generate a 2D track, you can use this tool to generate that 2D path. The next is point to 3D. So point to 3D, it's actually a triangulation tool. So it's asking you to pick the same spot on your image in three different places in time. And that's what point A, point B, point C is. And then you input a camera and it will then create an axis node in 3D space where that lives in space relative to that camera. 